those are two problems that a student taking the maths IB exam might encounter. And if you'd like to see anything similar to this in the future, or if you have any suggestions for any problems or topics that you'd like to see, let me know in the comments. So absolute value inequalities are something that a lot of students find difficult. So let's try to find a rigorous way of approaching those kinds of questions. So I'm going to do the first one. I'm going to rewrite it as absolute value of 5 minus 3x is greater than 2x. So the first thing that you should try to do is find when the quantity under the absolute value cancels out. So we're going to put the condition that this is equal to 0, which gives us an x equal 5 over 3, like this. And we're going to try to draw this on the real axis. So let's say 0 is here, and 5 over 3 is here, like this. And we're going to consider two cases. The first one is when x is less than 5 over 3, and the other one is when x is greater than 5 over 3. And I put a round bracket here just to say that I'm not including 5 over 3 in the first part, and I will be including it in the second part. So that's the first case. So the first case, x is between minus infinity and 5 over 3. And as you can see, if x is within this range, then what's under the absolute value will be positive. So we can remove the absolute value and we get 5 minus 3x is greater than 2x, okay? Which gives us that 5x is less than 5 which means that x is less than 1. Okay, so in this case, x is between minus infinity and 1. This is what this tells us. But we also must take into account that x is between minus infinity and 5 over 3. Okay? And let's try to understand what's the uh, final solution for this case. So we've got 1 here. We've got 5 over 3 uh, somewhere to the right. And then... We have from minus infinity to 1, uh, we've got uh, this interval. And then from minus infinity to 5 over 3, we've got this interval. So we're looking at where there's an overlap, right? Because this and this must happen in the same time. So the final solution in this case is that x is between minus infinity and 1. And now we're going to look at what happens in case two, right? In other words, if x is at least uh, 5 over 3. So if x is from 5 over 3 to infinity, then the quantity under the absolute value will be negative, which means that we will have to write it as 3x minus 5 is greater than 2x, which means that x is greater than 5. So again, we have to see where the two intervals intersect. So this, as well as this, have to happen in the same time. So we've got 5 over 3 somewhere here, we've got 5 somewhere here, and then we have uh, this, and then the other interval is this one. So there intersection happens when x is from 5 to infinity. This is a solution to the inequality, but this is a solution as well. So the final answer is x can be either from 5 to infinity or it can be from minus infinity to 1. So uh, there's a reunion of two intervals and this gives you the final solution to this um, problem, okay? Now, let's try to uh, do the second one. Now, the difference with the second question is that now you have two absolute values. So we have absolute value of x plus 4 greater than absolute value of 2x. And I'm actually going to write this as 2 absolute value of x because you can take the 12 side without any uh, problem. So as before, we're going to check when the absolute values cancel out. Okay, so x plus 4 equals 0 means x is equal to minus 4. And this one is trivial. It means that x is equal 
to zero. Okay, so if we draw this on the real uh, line, we have zero here, we have minus four here. So in this case, there are three cases we need to go over. First of all, there is x less than minus four, then there's x from minus four to zero, but without zero, and then we're going to consider everything from zero onwards. Okay, so we have case one, we have case two, and we have case three. So let's go over them one by one. So in case one, x is from minus infinity to minus four. And if that happens, both of those quantities within the absolute values are negative, which means that uh, our absolute values become minus four minus x greater than two times minus x or minus two x. Okay, so this will give us that x is greater than four. Okay, so if we move minus two x to the left, we get x, and then we move minus four to the other side, we get four, which means that x is between four and infinity. And this doesn't really work because this and this have to be satisfied in the same time. And you can't have x be between minus infinity and minus 4 and between 4 and infinity. So case 1 uh, has no solutions. So we're going to move to case 2. So in case 2, we have x being between minus 4 and 0. Okay, now we have to be a bit careful because if x is in the second case, then this quantity is going to be positive and this one is still going to be negative. So we have x plus 4 will be greater than 2 multiplied by minus x. So in other words, we have x plus 4 greater than minus 2x, which means that 3x is greater than minus 4, which means that x is greater than minus 4 over 3. Okay, so this alone tells us that x can be anything from minus 4 over 3 to infinity. And now we just have to uh, combine this interval and this interval because, again, this and this have to happen in the same time. So let's see how we can do that. And the easiest way to do this is just draw um, the real line, the real axis. So we have 0 here. We have minus 4 here, so we know that on one hand, x has to be in this range, and then x also has to be from minus 4 over 3 to infinity. So minus 4 over 3 to infinity is this, and the overlap happens here, right? So x, in this case, is between minus 4 over 3 and 0. Okay, so this is the result from case two. And now we're going to treat case three separately as well. So case three implies that x is above zero. Okay, so x is from zero to infinity. And in this case, both absolute values are, or both the quantities inside the absolute values are positive. So we have x plus four, is bigger than 2x. Okay, which means that x is less than 4, so x is between minus infinity and 4 on one hand, but because we must have those occurring simultaneously, we've got 0 um, to infinity, so we've got this on one hand, and on the other hand, we have uh, we've got a 4 here as well. So we have this. So the overlap is from 0 to 4. So x in this case can be from uh, 0 to 4, like this. And this is what case 3 gives us. So case 1 didn't actually give us any uh, solutions. Then we had this from case two, and then we have this one from case three. So what we can therefore say 
is that so the final answer is x can be anything from uh, 0 to 4 and then we have a reunion with this interval minus 4 over 3 to uh, minus 4 over 3 to 0 so minus 4 over 3 there is open interval to 0 like this right and if you think about it if you uh, put those two intervals together the final result is going to be from minus 4 over, th over 3 to 4, like that. So any number from this interval, uh, except the ends, uh, satisfy the, the inequality. And that's the end of the question.